You are now within reach of the end of this project, and not a moment too soon, I suspect. You'll be pleased to know you're just two methods away from the end, and neither of them are particularly taxing. First is this subtract life method, which is called when a penguin falls off the screen without being sliced. It needs to subtract one from the lives property we created what seems like years ago, update the images in the lives images array so the correct number are crossed off, then end the game if the player is out of lives. To make it a bit clearer that something bad has happened, we're also going to add playing a sound and animate the life being lost. We'll set the X and Y scale of the life being lost to 1.3, then animate it down to 1.0. So first, we'll do lives minus equals 1, and run a sound by saying run skaction.play sound file named wrong.caf. You made a mistake without waiting for completion. Now, which life sprite we want to change depends on how many lives we now have. We'll say life is an SK sprite node. And if lives is equal to two, there's two remaining, then life is equal to lives images zero. Else, if lives is one, then life is lives images one. Else, life is lives images two and we'll call end game. At this point, we have our sprite node. We want to change its texture, so it'll say it's gone. And that's done by saying life.texture is equal to SK texture with image named slice life gone. So let's take a look at our asset catalog again, and you'll see we have slice life that's our empty white cross. And slice life gone is a filled red cross, so it's clear something's gone wrong. Back in games.swift, we're going to scale that thing down so it's clear something's changed. We'll say uh, life.x scale is 1.3, life.y scale is 1.3, and then life.run, sk action, dot scale to 1 over duration 0.1. So it'll become big immediately, like that, and then scale down very quickly down to 100%. If you remember, we used SK Texture way back in Project 14 to modify the content of a sprite without having to recreate it. And finally, there's the end game method, which is going to end the game. Now, we're calling it in two places so far, once if you swipe a bomb, and once if you run out of lives. But I'm going to add a parameter to this thing, telling us whether it was triggered by a bomb or not. We'll say end game triggered by bomb false. And uh, I'll do command F to find the other place I call end game. End game's there. Uh, we'll say this time as so you swipe a bomb, end game triggered by bomb is true. And for our method definition, we'll say triggered by bomb is some sort of bool. So we know inside this method whether we got to this point because they swiped across a bomb or not. Now inside here, we're going to start by checking whether the game's ended or not. That requires a new property. We'll say up top, uh, var is game ended equals false. So the game's running by default. And then inside end game, which is down here somewhere, there it is. We'll say guard is game ended is false, else return. Don't try and run the end game method more than once by accident. Inside there, we'll say is game ended is true. The game's now over. We'll do physics world dot speed is zero. Stop everything from moving. And we're going to say is user interaction enabled equals false. Stop the user from tapping or swiping on our screen anymore because the game's over. As the game's finished, we'll also kill our bomb sound effect by saying bomb sound effect question mark dot stop and bomb sound effect equals nil. Stop it and destroy the AV audio player. And now we're going to use our parameter triggered by bomb. Because if this game ended because the player swiped across a bomb, we want to make sure all three of our lives images have the slice life gone texture. So we'll say if triggered by bomb, then lives images zero dot texture is SK texture 
image named slice life gone and same for lives images one and two so all three of those things will have their texture changed to the red cross now even though the game has ended some actions can still take place which will be banned if possible so i'll go ahead and take this line of code here guard is game ended equals false else return and i'll put that into toss enemies so i'll uh, go to this jump bar up here and choose toss enemies and paste that at the top let's not make it more enemies if the game's over and also put it into touches moved just in case it's still active so up here at the top i'll have that same guard statement like that and that's it your game is done